Thank you very much. So a bit about the structure of the talk. Um, firstly, I'm going to introduce schistosomiasis and how it might relate to water sanitation and hygiene. Then I'm going to present the results of a systematic review and a meta-analysis um, seeking to answer the question of whether people with better water and sanitation have less schistosome infections. Then I'm going to talk about some work from southern Ethiopia um, investigating whether um, schools and households with better sanitation in particular have less hookworm and schistosomiasis. And then finally, I'm going to describe how this work is being upscaled over almost 3,000 schools across Ethiopia. So WASH is water, sanitation, and hygiene. And the schistosomiasis life cycles alternate between adult worms in the human hosts and snails, uh, sporocysts in the snails. So the adult worms lay eggs, which develop into myricidia in the fresh water. These then infect snails, and then the snails later release sicarii, which come back to infect more definitive hosts. So the rationale goes that water supplies should prevent water contact. If people have clean water from taps, for instance, they shouldn't need to go into the rivers and the lakes in order to get their water, and they should, A, be um, protected from infection with sicarii, but they should also not contaminate the water because they won't be going into the water <laughs> and maybe bringing in any eggs on their person or on their clothing. Sanitation should keep the urine and the feces away from fresh water, and it should therefore prevent the myricidia being able to infect the snails. And then, and then also hygiene potentially has a role to play because soap has been shown to be toxic to myricidia, to snails, and to sicarii. So using soap during water contact may protect from schistosome infections. So that's the rationale for um, how water and sanitation might uh, impact on schistosome transmission. Um, but to look at the question in a bit more detail, we reviewed the literature in order to see whether people with better water and sanitation have less schistosomiasis. So we wanted to use the, um, the JMP definitions of improved water and sanitation, but unfortunately the literature very rarely used them. So for instance, in the case of latrines, um, the JMP defines an improved latrine as one with a washable concrete floor, whereas usually the literature just um, looked at the infection rates in people with and without latrines and didn't go into any more detail about the latrines. So we used the following definitions, the definitions on the slide there, um, as, as safe water um, being that which probably doesn't pose a risk of, of containing sicarii, um, adequate sanitation, one uh, is sanitation which probably doesn't pose a risk of putting myricidia into water-containing snails. And we define schistosome infection as the presence of eggs in the urine or the feces. We used odds ratios as our summary measures, and we set them up such that an odds ratio of less than one represents less infection in those with the better water or sanitation. So apologies, this is not hugely clear, but this is the, um, the forest plot for the water, safe water and schistosome infection. So in blue, we have the studies on S. hematobium. In red, japonicum. Uh, in green, we have mansoni. And then in black, down at the bottom, we have the overall, um, overall schistosoma summary. So I want to draw your attention to the figure down at the bottom here. Overall having safe water was associated with significantly lower odds of schistosoma infection with an odds ratio of 0.53. And this also held for each species. So um, having safe water was associated with significantly lower odds of hematobium, mansoni, and japonicum infections. So moving on to sanitation, we split the sanitation meta-analyses um, according to species because um, the, with S. mansoni, the eggs are released in the feces, and with S. hematobium, the eggs are released in the urine. So it's possible that um, sanitation is more effective at preventing open defecation than it is open urination, and therefore we might expect sanitation to be more effective in combating S. mansoni than S. hematobium. So with S. mansoni, again, we found significantly lower odds of infection in those with adequate sanitation. And we found the same thing for S. hematobium. 
The odds ratio was slightly higher, but, um, but not uh, significantly different. So moving on to a project in um, southern Ethiopia. This was the baseline of a longitudinal study investigating integrated school health. So um, combining WASH, deworming, and homegrown school feeding, and the Partnership for Child Development was looking at whether these can all be combined in order to um, optimize health and education. So last year, we collected um, baseline data in 30 schools, which included parasitic testing, um, school-level WASH um, assessment and school feeding surveys, household-level WASH assessment, um, and then asking students about their attitudes and practices relating to water, sanitation, and hygiene. So in terms of the findings, um, we actually found very little schistosomiasis. So it was about 11 cases out of 3,000 children were positive for S. mansoni and zero cases for hematobium. Um, we did find quite a lot more hookworm. So the, the average prevalence over the 30 schools was around 20%. Um, we found very low water supply coverage in the households, um, quite low sanitation coverage in the households, and also while, um, while many households did have a toilet, this was usually just a hole in the ground and not, not really anything more than that. Um, the water came from a mixture of standpipes, which are inconvenient to use, and rivers and lakes, which are both inconvenient and potentially unsafe. Um, the school sanitation was mainly pit latrines, which are improved, but they were often in quite poor condition. And when we tested the um, hookworm infection rates against the school and household sanitation indicators, such as cleanliness, uh, presence of urine or feces on the floor, we found no significant associations. Um, this shows the, the locations of the schools, and the schools in darker red are those with um, higher hookworm prevalence. And what you see is that the hookworm is really quite concentrated in a few schools. And what this may show is that the, the geographical um, factors such as rainfall or humidity might be stronger drivers than water and sanitation. And they therefore might be masking any impact of, of sanitation condition. So it looks like we need to look at more schools to investigate these questions more thoroughly. Um, in the recent uh, mapping of schistosomiasis and soil transmitted helminths over Ethiopia, um, all, the, all of the around 2,800 schools that were visited also had their water, sanitation, and hygiene assessed. And I'm planning to use multivariate analysis to compare the schistosomiasis and the water, sanitation, and hygiene data. We're currently cleaning the data, but just to show you a couple of early maps, um, this is the S. mansoni prevalence across Ethiopia. So it's, it occurs in lots of different places, but it's primarily in the north. And then these are the, the water sources in Ethiopian schools. So in green, we have schools with year-round water sources. Yellow are schools with um, water sources that only provide water in the rainy season. And then uh, red are schools with no water sources at all. So in conclusion, um, in a meta-analysis, we found that people with um, better water and sanitation had significantly lower odds of schistosome infection. In 30 schools in southern Ethiopia, we found very little schistosomiasis, and we weren't able to find any correlations between the sanitation and the hookworm. Um, but we're currently expanding this to a much larger set of schools. <coughs>